Uh, walk us through, if you don't mind, the sort of supply and demand picture for oil over, let's say, the first three months, the first six months of 2022. I think over the next three months, this market's going to continue to get tighter. Inventories are drying. Um, demand is not nearly as damaged by Omicron as we would initially would have thought back when we had the, you know, the Black Friday sell-off back in late November. So strong demand, inadequate supply, inventories continue to draw. Um, that opens this market up to the upside. I think the other important point is investors have not liked this sector. There's not a lot of capital in the market. So <laughs> when we have investors come back you know, with a fresh start to the new year, we're likely to see a lot more capital move into oil and commodities more broadly, um, really creating that risk on environment. So we're sticking with our guns of you know, $85 a barrel. And if you actually have Iran continue to be delayed and kicked into 2023, um, you can take that up of well above $90 a barrel. Yeah, you, uh, I was going to ask that very question because it was uh, not that long ago that you said you could possibly see $90 a barrel. Uh, Brent, I think today is at about 80. And as we mentioned there just a moment ago, West Texas at 78. So there's nothing uh, in your, uh, on your horizon uh, that that uh, casts any doubt in your mind on where where oil prices are headed short term. Yeah, I mean, if you look at you know the micro fundamentals in this market have been intact the entire time. What happened at, towards the end of last year is we had the Omicron concerns, China concerns, the SPR concerns. All three of those have reversed right now. And the bottom line, inventories are drying. The markets are tight. And when we look at the you know this macro headwind it is now turned into a macro tailwind, which should bring a lot of the money back into the sector and push this market higher. So, so we're very positive, and we think it's the beginning of a, you know, a much longer bull trajectory that's going to last years. Yeah. So, so you pointed out that it has not been a popular sector for quite some time, uh, and it's just the fundamentals that are going to, that's going to draw capital back in. Yeah. It, 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 you know, here's a stat. You look at uh, you know, the earnings of the energy companies in the S&P. They represent about 5% of earnings, but the actual market cap is somewhere around three. So that kind of industry, whether if it is commodities, equities, the whole entire sector is not loved right now. And we think that's going to be one of the big shifts that happen over the course of the next several, I would even say, that, you know, the next several you know weeks as people kick off the new year, they're going to go, hey, old economy looks pretty good right now, particularly tech is selling off right now. Um, so that shift away from new economy into old economy. The other thing to keep remember about commodities in particular, um, they're a hedge against rising interest rates. So if we have this Fed pivot and a more hawkish Fed, you want to be in commodities because they're going to be the ones that hedge you against that kind of environment. Because remember, it's the pressure in oil and commodities that's forcing their hand. You see, Jeff, that oil could remain range bound, but the stocks could still do well this year. Absolutely. Um, in fact, if you look at, you know, historically, when you have the big run up in oil prices, like let's go back to like 2004, the beginning of that, that super cycle era, oil moved first and then you have the equities move. And what happens that creates the equities move first, capital flows in, they get access to capital, they spend it, that creates the inflationary pressures in the oil service industries that then begins to lift this market higher. So, you know, we don't expect to see oil being that range bound. We think we're gonna hit fresh highs, uh, but we do think the upside in the equities because they've lagged so much over the course of the last year is significant here as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.